Okay, so you, what round of the HCG protocol? How many rounds have you done? A, a total in my life of three, but I count pretty much like two because the first one was um, before I read Weight Loss Apocalypse, and I only lasted 21 days. I don't think the batch I got was legit because I was hungry and tired and weak and struggling very badly, I, although I did lose weight. but um, So I'd say when I, when I speak of rounds now, I, I just say that I did two rounds, but I've actually really in my life done three. Okay. And where are you at right now? You're in maintenance. Yeah, like, but, you know, I didn't have a successful uh, second round. And I have to say that's because you had said to me when I told you I wanted to do a second round, I waited probably about seven weeks in between rounds. Mm -hmm. And I remember that you said to me, oh, I really don't think it's a good idea. This isn't your exact words, but you didn't think it was a good idea that I sat in another round because you felt that I probably would cheat. And, you know, you didn't want to, me to set myself up for that. And, of course, I didn't listen because I still, in my mind, had that addiction to wanting to lose more weight. Because I, I got down to my previous, like, set point that I'd been at for probably five or six years, which I wasn't happy with. Because it's still about 25 pounds more than I want to be. Almost yeah. Almost 30. Probably. Uh, but I did get there. And I was fitting in all, all my old clothes again. But I really was doing fabulous. I maintained through all three weeks of P3 and three weeks of P4 and our two and a half of P4. After your second and, round? No, I, I'm sorry. After the first round because I did really fabulous with the Oh, first that's round. right. Okay. Real quick though. That's it. The, drive to, the drive to go into that second phase, you had, you said you'd gained some weight back? No, no you maintained. No, really. Okay. I maintained. Okay. You maintained. So I you went into the second round lower. thinking, I got to lose the rest of this weight. Yes. Yeah, that's what everybody thinks. Exactly. So when I said, hey, hold up, you don't sound like you're ready, it's too focused on the weight, it's... Yeah. Your mentality, and this is normal, and this isn't your mentality, this is the mentality of the diet addiction. Right. Is, I hate this weight, this weight makes me feel uncomfortable, this weight makes me feel like a piece of shit, this weight makes me feel like I'm being held back. Is that a good description that being held back is the, what you were feeling? So when I say, hey, hold on, it's like saying, you're telling me to hold back more. Right. So it's really hard when I say, hey, put on the put on the brakes a little bit. You're not thinking from the right point of view. A lot of times people go, oh, yeah, I get what you're saying. I appreciate your advice. I'm going to do what I want to do anyways, which is fine. You're supposed to do that. That's free will, right? Yeah, no, you you okay. um, you just you gave me good and gentle advice, but you did support me when I was going to start the round because you knew I was going to do it anyway. But yeah, I just um, it just threw. I was doing so well in maintenance. I was eating to hunger. I wasn't judging food. I it, because by the time I was in P four, if I wanted to go out for an ice cream with my family, I did. I might choose like, you know, um, no added sugar one or something, just because I wanted to, and I felt good all the time. I wasn't overeating. And I don't. I I feel like I threw a monkey wrench in because then I loaded, which to me loading brings up that whole binging thing again. Yeah, that's and what happens when you know we must not have prepared you for that loading psychologically. Because I go into loading with patients and I I do everything possible to make it not a binge, which is the well, last supper mentality. That's like dieting mentality, right? Yeah. Yeah, and loading is really important in terms of psychological uh, work because if you go into it with the last supper mentality, it is a full on binge. It is, and that's what yeah. it was. Yeah, that's and why I tell I, people you know, to um, eat the foods they associate to emotion, but eat them without the emotion. So it'd be like having cake for breakfast or ice cream in the morning, having, or tacos in the morning. Does that make sense? But anyways. Oh yeah. And Moving I, I on. So you did your uh, you did your second round and you struggled. Yeah, absolutely. The first uh, the first week into it, I think um, I had a day where I knew I usually don't use the uh, Grassini mm -hmm. because for me, you know, any usually if I start with any kind of carbs, although in the first round I was successful, just eating them like I was supposed to as an emergency when I yeah, really there was no emotion good. involved with it. You used it functionally. No. And it wasn't like that. In the second round, um, I bought them. And I knew, I had in my head, you know, you're not ready to handle these Grissini. You know you're not. 
And you and, and it's not the Grissini. You know it's not it's, about the right, Grissini. It me. <laughs> it's the way you're using them that you knew was wrong. You're like I'm using right. them like an like a crutch. I can have these. Like candy. So I'll have them. Like um you're feeding an emotion and that is what you can't handle. It's not the Grissini, it's the emotion you've attached to it. Right. What's the difference between the first round when you could eat it and felt no vulnerability whatsoever? Because I was living in the weight loss apocalypse mentality. <laughs> I was. I read the book and I got it and I just started that round doing that and I sailed through it. This time I just, I was, uh, I want to get the rest of this weight off. Um, this is going to be great. I'm going to get smaller. And then it was like, it, you know, the whole, the whole, it was just no different than any other diet. I, I flipped right back into that. And then I, my first, so after Wait, I was Hold on. What, I want to know how you got sucked back into that. Were you getting internet help? Was it like, were you on forums? Um, yes, I did go on forums. Did you notice that that's, that's kind of sucks you in? Cause a lot of people in those forums are the, they have the same addiction. Yes. Right. I'm sorry. No, I this don't phone care. Keeps ringing. Um, it's just distracting cause it's telling me who's calling. <laughs> okay. Did they stop calling? Um, so the, I, I basically said, did you notice when you went on to a lot of these forums, a lot of them are obsessed with weight. They, uh, they hyper react if they feel like they're gaining weight. They freak out. Yeah, um, yes, no, I did. I was on a couple of those forums, and one of them was that there was a whole group of people that were getting ready to start a round. And um, I thought that would be a good thing for me. And it had nothing to do with them. It was me, you know. Oh, I agree. All... I, I would agree. Yeah. I'm not blaming, but the mentality is easy to, to take on. Yes. It's there, there, when I when I um, hear the mentality, I don't judge it. It is it is actually a way of thinking that we are taught. It's not it's not a sign of someone's fault or personality or bad. And they're you know it it really is an unfortunate lower level of thinking that it's very difficult to get out of because it's almost fear based indoctrination. Anyways. I really yes. want to get into how you're doing right now because you got off that second round. Right, which wasn't that long ago. Um, like I said, it started It started with I binge on Grissini, and then I was okay for a few days. And then I think um, I Did had you, a bad day. Were you weighing yourself? I, were you weighing I, yourself? I, I, just a couple of times. All right, well, here's the deal. When you say, and then I had a couple good days, that's a sign that you are defining the day as good. You're defining the day as good based on the fact that you didn't have Grissini's. No, no, I define the day as good that I get up and told myself I'm not going to make this about weight. I'm just going to eat the food that's planned and just go on my day. Okay. Like I, which, get back into a right frame of mind. Okay, okay, so it's the weight. It's not the Grissini. So well, let's talk about when you're binging on those Grissini's. It had probably a lot to do with the fact that you felt like you you ate too much of it. You ruined the day. You gain the weight anyway, so I might as well eat the whole pack. Yeah. I'm not, am I putting words into your mouth or is that the truth? Is that no, no, it was more like, like you said, it wasn't about the Grissini. It was just that that happened to be the legal, legal food that I had available and it was totally emotional. I don't, I can't even tell you what was going on. It wasn't a very extraordinarily bad day, a good day. It was just... A day where I had the uh, well, there's you know, always the, a sense of failure to it, even if you're justifying yeah. it through the fact that oh, this this Grissini is on the protocol, I can eat it. That's it's a, that's a sign that you're rationalizing it, right? The yeah. fact that you're you're saying this is on protocol, that's a sign that you're saying, well, I I know these are bad because I was told they're bad and I shouldn't eat them. But Dr. Simeon said I could have them. So now you're playing, to, to go back and forth, you have to start with a negative to create the positive to create. Does that make sense? It's, That's true. Because I, I wouldn't have sat down with a bag of chicken and binge. Well, no. No, but, because no one says chicken's bad. Right. <laughs> so the <laughs> Yeah, this is the parameter thinking, you know, when we talk about um, something's rubbing against your, your speaker. 
Yeah, you know what? I had to take this out of its holder to because it wasn't standing up right, and I'm holding it in my hand. It's not working okay. out. Okay, your hand. No, it's working out, but your finger keeps on rubbing the speaker, and it's making really loud sounds. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, I have you back on the package here. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, where was I? Oh yeah. Okay, so you um. Because you've been told they're bad, right, you're right. thinking there's a trigger, there's a need, there's an emotion there that you go, I don't feel so good or I want them. There's an emotion there that creates the need for whatever it is. And that's why we start to say, well, they're on the protocol. I can have them. What was the emotion that happened prior to? Can you recall? Boredom? Um, lack of just... It was probably boredom. Yeah, I think it was boredom. That which I don't know if that even comes about because I have so many things that that could be doing and reading that. I don't know why boredom comes in. But it was that feeling of boredom that, you know, I'm just going to mm -hmm. eat. So I can have a Grissini. It's allowed. And then at some point, you, you kind of can tell there's something wrong in the decision, right? Yeah. And so you feel like you failed. Yes. And then what happens to that, what happens to the one Grissini limit? If you feel like you failed, why would you limit anything anymore? Right? Because if you fail, you fail the whole day. Right. Is that ringing a bell? Yeah. That's how addicts feel in general. Right. You're, right. You've had past addictions. Right. Substance and behavioral. Yeah. Does this ring a bell for those two? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it the yeah, substance? The day's gone. The day's gone. Might as well uh, just blow it all the way. Yep, because you know what? I'll, I will fix the damages. I will fix the damages. Right. That makes everything I'm doing that is abusive and wrong and you know is hurting other people and now it's hurting yourself. You know that it's harmful. However, if you think you can fix the damages the next day, the next three days that you do good, right? You think that that's going to fix and erase what you just did, right? Yes. It makes you unaware that it even happened. You know what happened, but it makes you unaware of why. It makes you unaware of how you keep on doing it. It makes you unaware of everything. So the that's key, right. So what's happening is the same thing for you. I'm just making the assumption. So you're now done with that protocol. You're done with the round. You did your three weeks, and now you you messaged me and you said, "Oh my God, I am out of control." Right. Am I? I, mean, is, I, I is everything I'm speaking to you? It's the same behavior that you did on protocol with those Grissinis that you're doing in all forms. So you basically, what happens too with this whole binging or addiction of any form? where you're binging on something you feel entitled to, deprived of, and judged, right, and mm -hmm. guilty about, is you create a stringency to it. I cannot have it. I cannot have it. Right? Right. Now what happens to your... Um, so now you have to have a control system to keep you from it. Right. Okay. Now. Just even made me think crazily like of starting another round again. Yeah, because I. And I <laughs> because I'm trying to fix it. And I'm saying, and but I then I keep flipping back and forth. That's why I said I really knew I needed a session to just really make my head right. Because I'm, I'm, whole, I'm in that whole cycle again. And, and I know a round's not going to fix it. No, you it, it doesn't. Because your wiring, your brain wiring is this. Is ha This is where the problem is wrong. It's how you're perceiving this whole thing. Right. And if you go, if you're thinking, if you are thinking, I cannot have it, I have to deprive it, it's, you're going to binge. It's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. You're, you, if you just think eliminating what you're eating is going to fix the desire, you're so opposite of reality. Right. By eliminating it, you are creating a humongous desire. But it's not even the desire, really, because the desire is coming from the guilt and shame that you have when you have a piece or bite. So when you say I have to eliminate it, what you're doing is you're creating a boundary. You're creating these controls around it. Those controls 
don't have leniency. So what you're looking to do, chances are, whatever it is that you're binging on, whether it's alcohol, whether it's porn, whether it's gambling, whether it's um, a variety, pulling your hair out, cutting your, is this. You can't have any of it. You can't touch it. You can't have any of it. You can't do it, right? Right. So if you have like 1% of it, what does that feel like? Failure. 1% is just as big of a failure as 100% of it. Oh, right. So yes. you might as well give yourself 100% because, and then the other thing that is common in this type of thinking is that we do it in terms of days. So the day is ruined. Right. So there's, there's not just this parameter in terms of quantity, but the day, the time. There's a time parameter and there's a quantity parameter that we're using. So if you have a little bit, that ruins the day. It defines the entire waking day. Correct? Right. So if you have... 1% of 100, and it defines the day, you might as well get as much as you can for that day in. It doesn't make sense to continue to follow your controls for the entire day if you've, if you've defined the day by failure. Right. So is it about what you choose to fill into that day of failure? Should we be focusing on what are you choosing to eat during your failure day? Is it about the binging food that you're eating or is it about the feeling of failure that you've ruined the day? You know, it's really a fine line, Robin, because, um, you know, that's what the psych, that whole circle I struggle with it. Well... You know, I can't, I, I, I'm judging, I'm judging the food and then I'm feeling, then I'm saying, well, I shouldn't eat that because that will make me gain weight. Well, then here we go back with the whole diet There's that thing weight again. mentality. That's the failure. That's the personal religion. But the thing is that I did get, where I know that this is really deeply rooted with me, but also too, probably my body type because I really do gain, I can't handle a lot of carbs. Well, that but, has to do with not just your how much body fat you have, but you're a female, and you're postmenopausal. Yeah, well, I still, you know. Well, yeah. I still, I gotta There's some beautiful this. science behind that. Not only that, but you probably feel really physically ill because of it. So it's not even the weight gain, but just look at the inflammatory response. Yours is going to be just by nature of your age, and where you're going to be more sensitive. Yes. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. There's that's like intelligent thinking when you say well I don't have a whole lot of leniency with this food type because it's a powerful hormonal stimulant and I am sensitive hormonally it doesn't make for a very your quantity of that type of food there is a point of of balance with it Right, and that's where these that's that's what you just said right there. That's where I think I get into trouble. Well, because your point of the, the trouble is your what you're probably doing is you're feeding an emotional issue with um, a food type that you don't have a lot of leniency with physiologically. So you have this emotion that let's say needs twenty twenty percent filling. You're giving it, to fill it up, that emotion up, you're using a food that takes two bites to get 20% of what you need. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't know if that was a good description. You have an emotional need, and you're trying right. to fill it with something that you know your body doesn't need very much of. Right. So then you criticize the fat as the outcome. You're not looking at maybe the need, emotional need, is the problem, not the fact that the food you choose to use causes damage. Right. Oh, definitely. But here's the other thing you have to understand. <clears throat> if you have an emotional issue you're compensating for, hormonally in the brain, you may be feeling a drop in dopamine, which makes you feel insecure. It makes you feel agitated, a little anxious, sad. 
right. you're going to seek something that stimulates an appropriate amount of dopamine. So sugar can do that. You're not yeah. going to drugs and alcohol. You know what? Does that make sense? So uh, go to go to like um, a ga the gambling. Okay, go to that one. How much determined how much you bet? What determined how much you were willing to lose? What emotion? There's an emotion you're compensating for. When were you more risky? Does that make sense? When you were, was it when you were feeling emotionally more distraught? Yeah. Okay. I don't even have to have that addiction to know that. <laughs> because it's <laughs> predictable. Yeah, it's predictable. Yeah. So look at, look at the food you're choosing. Okay. Doesn't it make sense? Just look at the neurochemistry of the narcotic area of the brain. If you have a sense of severe, like a severe stressor, or, you know, boredom is an easy one too, even though it's not severe, it's looking for entertainment. So what are you going to choose? Right. Something that develops that sense of like pleasure. So it's a perfect fit. So your choice sounds about right. But then there's this other component that you understand that this is an inflammatory food and it does cause issues for women who are inflamed anyways. Right. So it's like you're stuck. You, the easy thing for me to say is you need to find a different addiction. <laughs> but I don't want any of them. <laughs> I know. So what's the only solution? You're going to need to fix this underlying sense of need. Why are you so needy? Why are you so sensitive? Oh. Well, you do know. You actually do have an awareness of it. You're the only expert of why. Do you think I'm going to sit here and tell you, oh, I know exactly why you're needy. And I know when you're needy. I know what type of need you have. And I know to the quantity and volume of that neediness when it occurs for you. Do I know that? No. Who knows? But you know what you said last, last session to me that was really key? or it might have been the session before, is that when that comes, that thing I call that I tell, I I, I, need, cause my, I know other people that have it too, and they understand it, like that thing that inside it, like you need something. Like for some people it's a cigarette, or other people it's a uh, need to go shopping, or they need to, need to fill something. And I say, and you taught me, well, just sit there with it. Just sit there with it, and you know, let it overcome you or whatever. Invite the monster in. And I, I you know, I, I really feel that that's the answer. Mm -hmm. I know. But some, sometimes I just delude myself into thinking, fuck it. I'm just going, excuse my language. I'm just going with the, the, the solution that really isn't a solution rather than. Yeah, and that's conditioning. You know, yeah, you're, not, I, you're yeah. not dead yet. You know, when people go through the death dying process. They realize that that was basically dying in itself. You're, you're, it's a form of death, but it's a fear-based, it's a fear-based thing. You need to kind of decide that that conditioning, that's the problem. You, the, how much you are fearful of weight needs to not go towards that outcome. That's like such an, such a distraction right it doesn't even touch the real issue that is within that what you just described let's think about when that feeling comes when you're anxious when you're like i don't know what there's something i need to feel i there's something that's that is definitely brain chemistry that's probably dopamine dropping those moments you probably need to feel a sense of care and love much easier to get that from an inanimate object or a, um, or an action you know you remember when I said you're the expert of that feeling of need yes. you are the only one that knows when it happens you're only you're the only one that knows what what it needs what will fill it what will take it away and to what extent the the almost the the kind of potency of that need there's like this multi-dimension it's multi-dimensional that feeling isn't it 
Yeah, it is. And and we learned through behavior and learned through practice and conditioning what will work for it. In the past, it's been other behaviors, other drugs and addictions, right? Yeah. When did that... Yeah. Can you, instead of going to something outside of yourself, a person, an action, an object, let's focus on going towards what you're really seeking. What is it? When you were a child, when this started for you, when you were a teenager, when you were an adolescent, that feeling was probably there, and it was mostly a sense of being isolated or not provided for. I get a sense it's a lack of provision. What would you, ha if you knew what you know now and you could talk to you at that age, if you could get into your mind as, at that young age that you started to have this sense of, of sadness and insecurity, I have a feeling it is a sense of sadness and isolation, lack of touch, you know, just being touched and caressed, someone holding you, just someone to put you on their lap and just rock like this. I, I'm really getting a clear sense of this, actually. What would you do for her? Scoop her up. And you would just, you, um, I'm going to recommend you get a rocking chair. I know this sounds really freaking bizarre. <laughs> I have one. I need you I don't to, do, I don't sit in it, but I have one downstairs. Okay. I need you to pull it out and I would like for you to put it in your kitchen. It's going to be bizarre and, or put it somewhere where you don't feel like you have to hide what you're doing. Cause I don't want you to hide this rocking chair. I have a, a feeling when you get that weird sense come up, I need you to sit in the rocking chair. I want you to get a pillow or I want you to and get comfortable. And I don't, don't even grab a book. Don't grab any music. Don't grab anything. I want you to shut your eyes and I want you to rock in it and breathe. Rock it and breathe. It's just experiment with that. I have a feeling that that is going to be beyond what any drug or addictive behavior you've ever done. It will surpass that potency. It is going to go beyond measure. I have a sense that you will cry and you will laugh and you're going to go, holy shit, I'm now addicted to rocking chairs. <laughs> That's safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try that. Yeah. I mean, what, what what do we have to lose here, honey? Nothing. I know. So do not jump into another protocol. You know as well as I do, the body will resolve this on its own. I just think you need something loving and caring. I mean, you really need a, a self-fulfilling love for to to rewire that part of the brain that has been conditioned to feel itchy. Dirty. Yes. It's a dirty. What I really dirty. want is to be like, um, to, to, to feel towards um, food. But I know I'm bringing it back to food again because I know what you're saying about the big picture of, of just my whole life, not just of the food issue. But is I really want to be like I was in P3. I was totally neutral. I ate when I was hungry. And when okay. when I was hungry, I, I chose foods that weren't, you know, like you said, um, didn't have that infl inflammatory You were response. more balanced with it. I, I guess that's a, a yeah. word to say it's more balanced. If you had something, it wasn't very much. It was a taste and you were good, right? It, and it was really to satisfy okay. um, a physical need, not an emotional need, I felt. Yeah, okay. So and if I did have a little emotion kick in, I, if I chose, chose something that wasn't like a piece of cheese or something... I, it wouldn't lead me to want to binge like a Yeah, you weren't you. judging yourself. So here's what I'm going to have you do. We're going to end with this. I want you to, today, I just want you to, it's clean slate. You are not to, to judge yourself today. You're not allowed to judge or hate yourself. There's no parameters for you today, okay? None. Okay. That's where we're going to start. How's that feel? I like that. Me too. It's a beautiful feeling. Look at your face. Oh my God. You are so like, <gasps> thank <Yay>. you. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? You don't, you are not allowed to be mean to yourself today. You are, you are not allowed to put these crazy rules that are abusive. You are to care and to nurture not to demean and judge.
That's what I need. I'm just giving you permission to love yourself unconditionally. There's no conditions today. All you're going to do is just love, love, love. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Why do I get so emotional about this? <laughs> because you believe it and you're invested in it and you're a true person. <laughs> That's why. It isn't just a job to you. Could could you take this not could you not take this serious, this conversation? I just think that everything you said in the probably the last five minutes was all I even needed to hear today. Starting with the rock and cheer. Oh no, starting with being scooped up. It's of all you've needed this whole time. You are allowed to love yourself and you do not need conditions to know that, okay? I'm sorry. I'm going to start my period or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Okay. It was the super moon the last few days ago. I'm blaming everything else for why I'm so emotional. Oh, you're beautiful. You got a lot of stuff going on too. I know, but this is this is really important to me because I know how you feel. You do, don't you? I, I do, and it is hell on earth. And really, all you need is love. That's the only thing that can cure this. And the only thing that can get you through those feelings is a sense of love. There's, it is the most powerful, uh, forgiving thing you can do for yourself that will totally dismantle a need for anything really and then Robin, can... I I can't believe how um you know we're off camera right no I'm gonna turn this off okay <laughs> goodbye